Ever find yourself wondering about the Star Trek multiverse, its concepts, and characters? Do you spend your time thinking about how deep Star Trek goes? Hi, this is Trek Expertise, where we discuss all things science fiction through the lens of Star Trek. Within the history of the Star Trek multiverse, human Vulcan first contact occupies a place so important as to be almost sacred. It is a momentous event propelling human civilization into finally solving many of its persistent problems like disease, poverty, and war. Indeed, we consider our own non-fictional query for extraterrestrial life to be one of the grandest, most important questions we can possibly ask, and we spend a considerable amount of effort in an attempt to answer that question. So, given the emphasis that Trek itself places on this event, it is ironic that the Vulcans were not actually the first aliens to show up on Earth. They weren't even close. In fact, in the Star Trek multiverse, there have been over two dozen alien visitations to pre-warp Earth. In this installment of Trek Expertise, we run through an accounting of these pre-warp alien visitations. Ready? The Sky Spirits. These aliens from the Delta Quadrant visited Earth 45,000 years ago and left a genetic mark on Native Americans, suggesting that Native Americans cannot be responsible for their own destinies. Not only is this the earliest recorded visit of aliens to Earth, it is also the most offensive. Unknown aliens visited Earth in 4000 BCE and abducted the ancestors of Gary Seven in an attempt to create agents to watch over the Earth. As many of you know, in 1968, Gary Seven does indeed try to prevent humanity from destroying itself with nuclear weapons. A band of incredibly powerful beings arrived on Earth 5000 years ago and were believed by the ancient Greeks to be gods. They left when no one worshipped them. I suppose it wasn't true love after all. An entity known as Koko Khan arrives briefly on Earth and directs Egyptian, Maya, and possibly other civilizations to build a special city. Once complete, the city itself would summon Koko Khan, beginning an era of cooperation and peace for humanity. These civilizations failed to come together to build that city. It seems we prefer our cities built on rock and roll. The non-corporeal entity Onaya feeds off the energy from the Roman poet Catullus in exchange for creative inspiration, killing him in the process. Onaya, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, and the Romans did not feed off the neural energies of creative people, okay? The preservers swing by as early as 1400 CE in order to abduct Mohican, Delaware, and Navajo peoples and whisk them away to some far-off planet to preserve them. Much like in the European Age of Discovery, kidnapping must be the true universal greeting between cultures. Inhabitants of the Megas II universe visit Salem, Massachusetts in the 17th century to look for friends, only to be accused of witchcraft, surprisingly just like high school. It is unclear if Onaya stayed on Earth after killing the Roman poet Catullus or left and then came back, but her poetic challenge this time is John Keats. Spoiler alert, Keats dies. Following precedent established by the Preservers and the Gary Seven aliens, the Skagarans show up to steal some people, this time cowboys. This is the first known visitation of the serial killing entity known as Red Jack, assuming the form of Jack the Ripper. Red Jack will go on to assume the role of various serial killers throughout history. How is it that no one awesome has visited pre-warp Earth so far? First awesome person to visit pre-warp Earth. Guinan takes up residence in 1890s California. You know, before California was cool. The Davidians, like Red Jack and Onaya before, show up to feed on human energies, treating San Francisco as a kind of cafeteria. Also, Earth needs to step up its tourism message. Earth, we are not for eating. Deanna Troy visits 1893 San Francisco to help stop the Davidians. She is half Betazoid and therefore half alien, so this visit technically counts as an alien visitation. Also, she looks good in a hat. A Nakul assassin shows up to kill Vladimir Lenin on Earth, creating a divergent timeline for other Nakul insurgents to hide out in during the Temporal Cold War. I bet these guys are galactic hide-and-seek champs where they come from. Spock, also half-alien, pays a visit with Captain Kirk via the Guardian of Forever. Welcome to Earth, Spock. Be sure to check out the gift shop. Kira Norris visits Earth with Miles O'Brien in order to look for their missing crewmates. If you can't find the Starfleet officers you're looking for, maybe these Starfleet officers also visiting 1930 will do. 
Continuing in the centuries-long tradition of aliens stealing humans, the Briori show up in 1937 to steal some humans for the purposes of enslavement. This is the fourth mass abduction of humans so far. They even take Amelia Earhart. Cork, Rom, Nog, and Odo, three ardent capitalists and their judgmental changeling companion, <laughs> accidentally visit Earth's most capitalist nation, specifically a military base called Area 51. It is a match made in heaven. If they'll buy poison, they'll buy anything. A group of Vulcans crash land in Carbon Creek, Pennsylvania, 106 years before official first contact. To Paul's great grandmother is aboard. They watch TV and get jobs. This is Kira's second trip to pre warp Earth. She is still looking for her lost crewmates. Hmm, where could they be? Spock takes his second trip to pre warp Earth in order to deal with the consequences of Gary Seven's meddling. Spock and the Enterprise visit 1969 Earth and accidentally bump into a contemporary Air Force pilot. This is Spock's third trip chronologically, but technically it's his second, according to his personal timeline. I hate temporal mechanics. Proving once and for all that Earth is his favorite temporal destination, Spock makes an unprecedented fourth visit to pre-warp Earth, this time to save the whales. They like you very much, but they are not the hell your whales. In order to stop Henry Starling and his unethical Chronoworks Industries from using 29th century technology to alter the timeline of the 20th century Earth, Voyager travels back in time. On this field trip, both Torres and Tuvok make separate landings and adapt to local customs. Zindi reptiles, in an attempt to prevent humanity from supposedly destroying the Zindi in the future, travel back to 2004 Detroit to create a biological weapon. To Paul also tags along to stop them. Just where was the TSA on this one? Science officer Jadzia Dax, the alien nesting doll of Starfleet, is accidentally stranded in Star Trek's version of an Occupy protest, where Benjamin Sisko is forced to assume the identity of a contemporary revolutionary. Kira Norris also lands here eventually. It is her third trip chronologically, but her fourth trip to a pre-warp Earth. I hate temporal mechanics. On the eve of official first contact, the crew of the Enterprise E go back in time to stop the Borg. In this, Deanna Troy makes her second visit to pre-warp Earth. Also on this field trip, some Borg friends land in the Arctic and remain popsicles until 2153. We have three or four honorable mentions here. One, the Q have undoubtedly visited Earth in the past. However, since they are Q and the nature of their visits tend to have nearly zero disruptions to the timeline, nor does anyone on pre-warp Earth realize that they are in fact interacting with aliens, I tend to count all their potential visits as one. Two, in 2063, Jean-Luc Picard brings up Lily Sloan to the Enterprise E during the 2063 Borg incident. There, Miss Sloan meets Worf, an alien. I am reluctant to include this meeting in the primary list because it happens in orbit, which is technically space. Three, there are at least two visits to pre-warp Earth that occur in alternate timelines. The first visit is by that of the Nakul and the Suliban Silik, who are making use of their manufactured timeline without Vladimir Lenin to hide out from the temporal Cold War. And then there's Major Kira Norris, again, visiting an altered 2048 in which Earth's bell riots never occurred. So do these honorable mentions count as pre-warp alien visitations? You be the judge. Let us know in the comments below. So that's it. A little over 50% of these pre-warp visits were a result of time travel. And many, many humans were kidnapped in not one, not two, but four known kidnapping raids. At least one pre-warp contact made use of humans as a food source. Spock is all-time pre-warp contact champion with four total visits. However, considering how time travel works, Spock's record can be bested at any time. I hate temporal mechanics. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to leave comments below and subscribe to the channel for future episodes.